like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. On number 14, it says, the shaded region in the figure above represents the intersection of the graphs of x less than or equal to zero, y less than or equal to zero, and which of the following inequalities? Well, just to be clear here, x less than zero is the inequality that's graphed right here. x equals zero is, uh, well, it's the y-axis. Okay, this is where x equals zero, and if x is less than zero, when you show that in inequality, you shade to the left, okay? y greater than or equal to zero. Now, y equals zero is actually just the x-axis. And since it's saying y is greater than zero, we're going to shade up. And you can see that in the shaded region. Okay, this shaded region is going to be the region where all of the inequalities, um, respective regions, overlap. So we can kind of see that being generated here. And then the last equation, or inequality rather, is what we're trying to figure out, which is basically this line right here. Now, you can see that the shading is above this, uh, this diagonal line, and so that means that I'm going to start writing my inequality as y is greater than or equal to something, right, because I'm going to be shading up. If it was shading below the line, it would be less than. So right away, I can, I can take out choice A and choice B because those are both saying less than, um, and I know that it can't be less than. So it's got to be either C, D, or E. So the next thing I can do is I can try to come up with what the equ equation for this line is. I notice first that the y-intercept is 1, is negative 1, and since that's clearly defined, um, I'm going to use this format, this y equals mx plus b, to help me write the equation. So in y equals mx plus b, um, m is the slope, or the rate of change. So let me uh, make a note of that here. m is the slope, or the sometimes it's called the rate of change. Uh, you may have heard it referred to as like rise over run. And we'll kind of use that explanation to come help us figure out what it is. Uh, the b value here is the y-intercept. In other words, it's where the graph crosses the uh, y-axis. So we can see clearly on the graph that the y-intercept is negative 1, because we can see right here that's where it's crossing the y-axis. The y-axis is the vertical axis, so that means that b has got to be negative 1. So it's going to be something mx uh, minus 1. So the last thing to do is figure out what this m is, because the y-intercept didn't really narrow anything down, right? Like all of these have minus one, so that's not particularly helpful. So to figure out the slope or the rate of change, you just need to pick two points on the graph, and I'll just pick these two intercepts, the x-intercept and the y-intercept, and you count your rise over run. So since uh, I have to go down one to the right two to get to the next point, my slope is going to be negative one-half, down one over two, and so that will, uh, now we can make our conclusion here. We can come up with our answer, which is going to be answer choice D. Uh, that's it for number 14. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day.